Welcome to ID the Future, a podcast of the Discovery Institute's Center for Science and Culture. I'm David Bose, your host. Popular television personality Bill Nye of Bill Nye the Science Guy fame is making headlines for a video he's featured in for BigThink.com. In the video, Nye laments how many people in the United States fail to believe in evolution and asserts that this refusal is holding back the advancement of the nation, the advance of everybody. When you have a portion of the population doesn't believe in that, it holds everybody back, really. Nye acknowledges that the United States is where most technological advances are made. I mean, we are the world's most advanced technological, so, I mean, you could say Japan, but generally the United States is where most of the innovation still happens. People still move to the United States. And that's largely because of the intellectual capital we have, the, the general understanding of science but never seems to consider how that acknowledgement undermines his thesis that the American refusal to fully embrace evolution is somehow holding us back in technology and as voting citizens. Here to talk about it with me is the Discovery Institute's Casey Loskin, author of Science and Human Origins. Casey, Bill Nye says that the denial of evolution is unique to the United States. Is that true? No, that's actually not true, because I don't think that folks in the U.S. are denying evolution. There are scientific skeptics of evolution who think that perhaps some forms of evolution, like microevolution or small-scale evolution, do occur, but are skeptical of large-scale claims that one type of organism can fundamentally transform into another. So first off, Nye is wrong to say that people out there are, quote-unquote, denying evolution. But he's also wrong to suggest that, I would say, skepticism of evolution is unique to the U.S. Studies have shown that in other countries like Canada have very similar statistics in terms of public acceptance of evolution. And there are many scientists internationally who are skeptical of Darwinian evolution. Listeners of ID the Future are aware of the significant group of Darwin skeptical scientists in the U.K. There's quite a few in Europe. There's also others in Australia, and really you can find them all over the world. So this idea that you know this is a peculiar American phenomenon is simply not true. Not to mention using the word evolution as a catch-all term makes it so that it seems as though people are denying any and all things that might be under the evolution umbrella when they might actually be objecting to other more specific things like what you're saying, which is uh, perhaps embrace of the materialist worldview. Yeah, I think that when people use terms like evolution deniers, that's rhetoric designed to make skepticism of evolution look unreasonable and unthinking and closed-minded. Oh, these people are just denying the evidence. In reality, when you look at what skeptics of evolution are actually saying, they're very thoughtful. They're saying, well, yeah, there are types of evolution that do occur. We can observe finch beaks will change in response to the drought conditions, the amount of rain that is occurring on the Galapagos Islands. And there's many examples of small-scale evolution which are readily recognized by Darwin skeptics. But if you're going to claim that natural selection and random mutation is the driving force that built the complexity of life, and, and this is a mechanism of evolution that can really build anything that we see in the complexity of biology, then you're going to find a lot of skeptics out there, and you're going to find that they're not evolution deniers, but they are skeptical of this unguided mechanism of natural selection and random mutation. What about Nye's assertion that when you have a portion of the population who doesn't believe in evolution, it holds everyone back. Well, this is an interesting comment from Nye, because what he's sort of saying is he's trying to scapegoat Darwin skeptics for many of the problems of society. He's basically saying, oh, we as a society cannot move forward until we get rid of these Darwin skeptics or we prevent them from promoting their views and, and letting other people learn about these ideas, this skepticism. Really what Nye is saying is that we need to prevent skeptics of evolution from having free speech in order to express their views. So it's really kind of scary that he's setting up Darwin skeptics as the cause of problems in society. And of course, this is all nonsense, the idea that somehow skeptics of Darwinian theory are holding back society. When you look at engineers, when you look at chemists, when you look at people who are producing a lot of the scientific products out there, huge numbers of them are skeptical of Darwinian evolution. And it's simply not true that somehow being skeptical of Darwinian evolution is harmful to society. As a matter of fact, when I speak on evolution, I go to various places, I find that skeptics of Darwinism 
often know far more about the topic than many just average folks out there that they heard about evolution in school. That's what they were taught. They believe it. It's the people who actually took the time to investigate the topic and became the skeptics. They have a much deeper understanding of biology and of the biological processes surrounding evolution, both for and against evolutionary theory, than the average person who just kind of bought into whatever they were taught in school without thinking about it. It's interesting that you would bring up engineers because not does the same thing at one point. Let me play the clip. Uh, we need engineers that can build stuff, solve problems. These are, it's just really hard thing. It's, it's really a hard thing. So Nye says we need scientifically literate voters and taxpayers and the engineers who can build stuff and solve problems as though somehow engineers out there don't solve anything unless they embrace the entire umbrella of, of evolution and all that the term might mean. It reminded me that uh, fairly recently I had the opportunity to interview Dr. Ben Carson, who is one of the world's most successful neurosurgeons who successfully separated twins conjoined at the brain. And uh, he is not a subscriber to Darwinian evolution in all of the ways that Nye would find essential in order for society to advance. So it strikes me that Nye's assertions are political and not scientific. Well, I think you're absolutely right, David. And I think if Bill Nye actually believes that engineers have to embrace evolution to be able to build things, that, again, is complete nonsense. What do engineers do when they want to design something? Do they use unguided evolution or do they use intelligent design? I think the answer is obvious. They use intelligent design. As a matter of fact, what's interesting is that engineers will often look at biology to help find solutions to our technological needs. And, of course, biology supposedly was not designed and yet it outperforms humanity's best designs. A lot of engineers are recognizing that actually the idea that an unguided process could produce features which outperform humanity's best technology, that really doesn't make sense. And I think that's why you find so many skeptics of Darwinian evolution among engineers. Matter of fact, I consistently find that engineers understand and agree with intelligent design at a much higher rate than scientists and folks from other technical fields. So the notion that in order to be a good engineer, you have to accept our winning evolution, I don't know if Bill Nye really believes that is true, but it's certainly a nonsensical view, which sounds like a political talking point. Frankly, I want my engineers understanding evolution. I also want them understanding intelligent design, because uh, I don't think a random and unguided process like Darwinian theory is always going to be a very good way of fine-tuning our engineering designs. I want my engineers to understand engineering, most of all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. He asserts in the video that evolution is the fundamental idea in all of life science, and he says to ignore evolution would be like trying to do, and when he says to ignore evolution, he's, he's using an umbrella term, and he hasn't defined specifically exactly what way he's using evolution there, but he's saying it's like trying to do geology with Without believing in tectonic plates, you just won't get the right answer. Your world will be a mystery instead of an exciting place. Is he right that failing to believe in evolution is uh, like failing to believe in tectonic plates? Does that mean you're not interested in exploring and you're willing to leave the whole world a mystery? Of course not. There's not a single leading proponent of intelligent design who doubts plate tectonics. And we can observe plate tectonics in real time today. The continents are moving. We can measure the rates at which they move. We can study the seafloor and understand the directions that they're moving in and how they've moved in the past. Darwinian evolution, you can observe that species evolve, but what we observe is that they evolve within limits. So if you're going to take the observations that we have today available to science, I think it could very naturally lead somebody to be skeptical of this grand evolutionary claim that all of life evolved by unguided natural selection, random mutation, and through universal common descent. And I think that Bill Nye is trying to just set up skepticism of Darwinian theory as if it's totally unreasonable by comparing it to ludicrous things. I'm surprised he didn't throw the old canards of flat earthism or geocentrism in there too. But the truth is that Skeptics of Darwinian evolution, again, they're very principled in their arguments. They're trying to hone in on exactly what can evolution do, what can it not do. You've got people like William Dembski at the Evolutionary Informatics Lab that are actually doing computer simulations of evolution and studying exactly what Darwinian processes can and cannot do. So these are scientifically tractable questions. It's really encouraging a whole field of scientific inquiry. So the idea that this is equivalent to ignoring the evidence or closing your mind 
or shutting off investigation. Again, these are just political talking points. I'm not really sure if Bill Nye, the science guy, has really been paying attention to what Darwin critics really say and the research they're really doing. One other comment on this, David, Bill Nye is welcome to have his viewpoint that evolution is one of the fundamental theories of all of science. I don't have a problem. If that's what he believes, that's fine. He can even have that view taught as one particular view that students learn about in public schools. I don't have any problem with that. The problem is that Bill Nye wants to censor people who I think would disagree with him and who would say that Darwinian evolution is not necessarily the main fundamental cornerstone of all modern science. Yes, natural selection happens. Yes, mutations happen. Yes, evolution happens. But there's a lot of folks out there who are credible scientists who are skeptical that those processes can explain everything we see. So, again, Bill Nye is overstating his case and I think trying to impose his viewpoint as the only one that ought to be heard. So if Nye were to use the term in a micro sense, is there a way that he could be correct? In other words, in saying that this is the fundamental building block of all life science, that things change and they change over time. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that you're describing my basic view, correct, that there is evolution. It does happen. Species can change over time. But what we observe is that there are limits to evolution, or as Michael Behe put it, there's an edge to evolution as far as what can natural selection and random mutation do? Now, Bill Nye is welcome to disagree with me. I mean, if he wants to feel that an unguided process of natural selection acting on random mutation can build all the complex features we see in life, he's welcome to believe that. And I am fine with his view being presented to students in public schools and parents teaching their kids about that view. The problem is that I'm not sure if Bill Nye would be okay with people descending from that view in public schools or parents expressing doubts about Darwinian theory to their kids. So I think that what we have here is, yeah, there are different views out there. Bill Nye is welcome to have his, but he's not welcome to prevent others from expressing their own views. He says, in a couple of centuries, a non-evolutionary worldview will not exist. There is no evidence for it. What are your views regarding that and the research of the Discovery Institute? Well, I'm a huge Star Trek fan myself, and I think that Bill Nye has been watching too much Star Trek. He's beginning to believe that what he sees in this TV show actually is true, where 200, 300 years from now, humanity throws off its primitive, non-evolutionary superstitions, and everybody becomes enlightened, so to speak, and flies off into space promoting evolutionary thinking. And again, I'm a huge fan of Star Trek. I find it very entertaining, but I don't think that the evidence is going to bring Nye's vision of the future into reality. I think that the evidence is increasingly pointing against Darwinian theory. More and more scientists are coming out and challenging it. The research is not supporting it. It may take two centuries before scientists are willing to overcome a lot of the stigma of doubting Darwin and actually acknowledge, hey, you know what? There's a real problem with this theory. This model, an unguided model of life's origins and diversification, really is not fitting with the data that we have before us. It may take a while, maybe not two centuries, maybe only 50 years. I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball, but I do know that the evidence does not point in that direction. And from the video interview that Nye did, it doesn't seem like he's very familiar with a lot of the evidence that's come out recently. Casey, in the video, Nye says, look, it's fine if you want to deny evolution, but just don't make your kids do it. And I say to the grown-ups, if you want to deny evolution and live in your world that's completely inconsistent with everything we observe in the universe, that's fine. But don't make your kids do it, because we need them. We need scientifically literate voters and taxpayers for the future. We need people that can, uh, we need engineers that can build stuff solve problems. And obviously, he's asserting that uh, if you teach your kids to be skeptical of evolution, you're failing in all of these fronts. What was your response to that? I want ID the future listeners to understand the gravity of what Bill Nye is saying. As we saw earlier, he tried to scapegoat Darwin skeptics for many problems in society that were holding society back. Now what he's saying is that he would deny parents the ability to teach their kids about their own personal doubts about Darwinism. Of course, he calls it denying evolution. So what he's really saying is it's a three-part argument. First, he defines accepting evolution as sort of a litmus test for whether you're scientifically literate. Then he says that people who deny evolution hinder the progress of society, and therefore his punchline is that parents, and I would assume teachers as well, should not teach 
kids to doubt evolution. And I think that this is scary. This is where a lot of materialist evolutionists are coming from today. They want to restrict the freedoms of Darwin skeptics to express their views. In Bill Nye's case, he wouldn't just restrict teachers. He would even restrict parents from expressing their views about doubts about evolution to kids. So this is where a lot of these folks are coming from. It's a very intolerant position. They don't even want parents teaching their kids what they believe on these subjects. And this is not a a healthy place, I think, for this debate to be. Well, to be fair to him, he doesn't say that he would mandate. He says that he urges people not to make your kids do it. But it's clear when you're saying also that you're holding the nation back, you're also giving this idea that there's a, uh, a national interest in preventing parents from imparting this view. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, Bill Nye doesn't go right out and say, hey, I want to restrict the rights of parents to teach kids at a legal or policy level, but he does say that he would encourage them to not teach their kids about doubts about evolution. And this whole argument is laying the groundwork for restricting the freedoms of Darwin skeptics. As you just said it, David, he starts off by saying, look, these people who quote unquote deny evolution are holding society back. And then his punchline is, therefore, I encourage parents to not teach their kids about their doubts about Darwin. It's a short step from there to see what would happen if these kind of people had their way with society. Casey Luskin, thanks so much. That concludes this edition of ID the Future. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and will consider supporting the work of the Discovery Institute's Center for Science and Culture. 